Hey up guys and welcome back to this unfolding disaster on the road to Wilt. In the last video you saw all the planning and the over analysis and the first five minutes where my plan to grab the East Hill objective straight off the bat was totally derailed by a combination of technical incompetence, mud and worry. And that's pretty much where we're picking up here. I've just caffled on the plan to blitz my way onto the East Hill with my half track mounted SS Pioneer platoon because I've suddenly decided that they're too lightly armed to assault the American infantry that I'm now convinced are there. Just to solidify my guess that my opponent is deployed pretty far up, I've spotted a Sherman over on the South Hill and a soldier up on the East Hill. That guy is about to get severely mortared by my pre-planned barrage and instead of that paving the way for a shock mechanised assault, those mortars are instead going to be covering my setting up a slow and steady stand-up attack. And this has a lot going for it. Up there I've got three platoons of infantry, three half-tracks and 105mm stug. So I should be able to grind down anything on that hilltop. It could get pretty nasty because the woods are very close to rain and there is a reverse slope that I'll have to deal with but it's very doable and taking the east hill will still set me up to isolate and take the north hill as in the original plan so the only thing that has really changed here is the speed of execution the downside is that speed of execution is absolutely key here I'm concentrating a good two-thirds of my force in a very small area and focusing on what is safe to assume is a small fraction of my opponent's force the longer it takes me to take the east hill, the more time my opponent has to react. Because I've concentrated my force in the small area on that hill, I'm not controlling the big areas on my flanks. If I move fast, this isn't a big deal, because once I've taken the hill, I can start to spread out and start controlling parts of the map again and make most of the East Hill's dominant position. But instead, what's essentially going on here is that the force my opponent has on that hill is pinning down most of my force in this overwhelming concentration and indirectly pinning down everything else which I have in reserve. I'm so focused on taking the East Hill that I'm not making any real efforts to control the rest of the battlefield. I'm not really engaged in any kind of significant reconnaissance and by committing most of my force from the word go and getting bogged down, I've lost a lot of flexibility. So even if I didn't have the kind of tactical tunnel vision that I'm now up to my neck in, my ability to improvise a new plan and carry it out quickly is fairly limited. Anyway, that's the big picture of what's going on down at the sharp end. Well, what's going on is I've moved one of the Falchimier platoons up using the Pioneer platoon tar tracks. They're the guys who are going to do the actual assault because they're a bit better trained and they've got a lot more automatic weapons with them. That's them moving up on the left now. And the guys on the right where in the bed sheets are the SS Pioneer platoon. They're putting as much fire down on the front of that hill as possible. So are the half tracks, so is the stug. But like I was worried about, my opponent's got all his guys in reverse slope where all this fire support just can't touch them. And as soon as my guys get close enough and their heads come over the crest, they're just gonna get picked off one by one very easily like this fire team here. The easiest way for me to deal with this would have been to properly time the assault with the mortars so the mortars are landing on the reverse slope where they're not going to be much of a hazard to my guys coming up the forward slope but the enemy is going to be pinned down take casualties generally be cowering in his holes and then the instant the barrage lifts friendly troops come over the crest and catch them before they can get back on their feet but obviously that all went out of the window so we're going to have to be doing it the hard way this is over on the other side of the hill on the right hand side you see these are the pioneers who are stacking up to put the fire down and there's a couple of Americans who are flanking round on the far right. There's a flamethrower team trying to get up to the top of the hill. Well, it might actually be able to cook somebody. And these Americans over on the right who are going through the woods are going after the Puma. This is the right hand Puma, which is leaving a kind of charmed life. It's getting shot at a lot. And there's been some partial penetrations from rifle fire and things, but it's not really damaging it that much. And presumably my opponent sent off an anti-tank team or a squad to go sort it out. But they're also doing a good job of keeping the guys over here pinned down and shoot them in the flank as they try and assault the hill. So broadly speaking, the assault is kind of bogging down a little bit. On the plus side though, all this fire support has cleared off the forward slope of the hill. That means it's basically now just a matter of stacking up as many men as I can at the crest and then going over the top and hoping that we're going to be able to build up that fire superiority to overwhelm them. If nothing goes disastrously wrong, now people who really play a fair bit of combat mission 
or have any common sense whatsoever really will be looking at all those icons in the map and thinking wow aren't they close together what's the worst possible thing that could happen right now the other downside to taking too long to assault somewhere is that the enemy can just bomb you to shit No warning, that means it's coming down on a target reference point with a lot of dead Germans hanging around in those woods now. And of course, my opponent's guys are totally safe on the other side of the hill. Quite cool though, is the fact that those explosions aren't kicking up a lot of dust like they do in the other titles, and that's because it's winter and the ground is rock solid, there isn't any dust around. That's a really nice little feature. This artillery barrage is the big turning point in this game. Most of my bad luck, my mistakes, tactical tunnel vision, all these things have just been leading up to this spectacular punishment and it's just knocked the fight right out of me. From here on everything just gets worse, which is saying something because they weren't exactly amazing to begin with. First off we have a little bit of bad luck. Previously I've moved the Hetzer up on the far left to try and cover that crossroads just above it there. And the last turn I've seen some infantry spotting contacts getting a bit close, so I thought I'd reverse it back where it still has a good field of fire. Literally the instant it starts to move, a tank contact icon pops up. The Hetz is reversing, it's got a fixed main gun in the hull, not in the turret, it's not going to be able to react. That's an M10 American tank destroyer that does have a turret, and it's the easiest thing in the world for the M10 to just whack the turret round and put some rounds straight through it. So bye bye Hetzer. At least I can put that down to bad luck though. Bad luck and bad timing. If you excuse the fact that I've let my opponent control most of the battlefield which is what made me feel I need to reverse it in the first place. <clears throat> but meanwhile I have made a proper total incompetent mistake which was I was playing peekaboo with that Sherman on the south hill with the left hand Puma which as you can see has just got nailed. This was to take the pressure off some of my guys who've actually reached the top of the East Hill and are on the crest. But that's not really particularly helpful because I know that the other side of the slope, the reverse slope, is still covered with Americans, I just can't see them. So I'm not really holding the objective. What I really need here is a short, sharp success. And that's why it's finally the Panthers' time to actually do something. Now it's moved it up onto the top of the hill where you can see the stug up there that's moving up to the crest of the east hill and the half tracks. Down here, down in the valley, is that pesky M10 which has been shelling my troops which are now like redeploying to defend the east hill. The panther sees the M10, the gunner starts aiming, somebody panics, they pop smoke and just reverse. It's aggravating. Could very easily have nailed that then. But instead, the AIs had a panic attack. And if they survive this battle, they're off to the Eastern Front, aren't you? Yes, yes you are. With your stupid pink hat. Just to make it worse, over on the right, I've moved this Stug 105 up to try and take out the Sherman, which is going to pop into view ahead of it in a second. 105mm heat round from a Stug versus a Sherman should be good, right? Well, first of all, you have to hit it. That shot went right in between the tracks and just missed. Bad luck. The Sherman's just taken out the left, the right-hand Puma. But any second now... Yep, 105mm heat round did absolutely nothing. Welcome to Final Blitzkrieg, where Shermans are actually quite scary. That is a Sherman Jumbo, which has about a couple of inches of extra armor plated on. And it's slanted and everything, it's a really tough piece of work. And this is the last big kick here for me. I'm used to thinking of the American army as being quite squishy and inexperienced, but now we're talking 1945, they've been through the ringer, they know what they're doing, their troops are all very veteran now, 
lots of better extra equipment is coming out. The Shermans are getting upgrade after upgrade and really the big balance of power between the American army and the German army has changed an awful lot. So with that Stug gone, that's all my armour apart from the other Stug which is sitting on top of the hill surrounded by dead bodies and refuses to do anything because it's broken and the Panther which as tribute to its monumental uselessness I've moved back into position it refuses to see the M10 and the M10 knocks it out with a single shot so it's time for a ceasefire and that's it there you go guys a nice little insight into how to lose a combat mission which is generally more interesting in some cases than just straight out success a big shout out to a Jarman G for playing against me he's an excellent opponent we've got a few more interesting games against him waiting to be turned into videos especially some crazy combat mission black sea ones to look out for thanks for watching there's plenty more combat mission in the pipeline don't forget to comment rate and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll catch you in the next video